Hello and welcome. Glad you could join us for this new edition of Tech 24. I'm Julia Seeger with the latest from the tech world. It's no bigger than three apples stacked on each other, yet it's set to unveil many secrets about stellar formation. In this edition, we tell you more about the French nano satellite PICSAT that was recently launched into space to study the star Beta Pictoris. And it's been making headlines here in France after Samsung, Apple and Epson are now being investigated by a French consumer watchdog for alleged planned obsolescence. So in this week's Test 24, we've decided to take a look at two innovations that are going against that trend by working on the robustness of their product. But first, the following pictures are as startling as they are incongruous. Several days ago, a Tesla sports car was sent into space on top SpaceX Falcon Heavy. Behind the wheel is a dummy test pilot dubbed Starman after Davy Bowie's hit. Elon Musk live-streamed the event and beamed back these astonishing pictures of the car. Well, to comment this footage, I'm now joined on set by Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hi, Julio. This is just completely out of this world, this car floating in, in space. Mm -hmm. It looks like a, a bad Photoshop picture. Um, the car was actually supposed to be on a path towards Mars, but it overshot that trajectory, didn't it? Well, yes, it was supposed to have been in an orbit between Earth and Mars while it looped around the Sun. But uh, the final blast of the upper thrust engine uh, propelled it farther than expected, and now it uh, overshot its planned trajectory, and now it's hurtling towards uh, the asteroid belt. Well, astronomers have calculated that it uh, will not reach the asteroid belt, but it will be somewhere in between Mars and the asteroid belt. Now, this, uh, even though it, uh, has, it has not been, you know, it is not looping the sun between Earth and Mars, this particular uh, event has demonstrated m many things. For example, the capability of, uh, of a heavy rocket to, to put things as far as the asteroid belt. So there are companies which are keen on mining minerals from asteroids or uh, from comets. So that could... So it could help science. It's not just an ego trip. Absolutely. It, it has many applications. And perhaps the most significant of it is the fact that the two rockets, they landed back on Earth. So the, uh, the uh, reusability of rockets, that also is also very important in uh, ensuring that these space flights are in inexpensive. Uh, and now, what's going to happen with this car? Will it just become, you know, another piece of garbage in, in space, like the other 500,000 that are orbiting the Earth right now? Well, the car will be subject to intense solar radiation, so definitely it will deteriorate and it won't remain in this uh, beautiful, shiny condition. And as it moves uh, towards the sun, the solar radiation will get more intense. So yes, it will eventually deteriorate. And so what are the techniques to get rid of, uh, of, of space junk, of so-called space junk? It is a, a real problem today to clean up space. Well, it's a massive problem. I mean, according to NASA, more than 500,000 uh, pieces, small pieces of debris orbit the Earth, out of which 20,000 are large chunks. These are, of course, leftovers of U satellite or some uh, rockets as well. Now, there are multiple ways that uh, different agencies in the world are proposing to uh, clean this junk. One, um, one such proposal is by the European Space Agency, uh, whose mission DE orbit is supposed to be launched in 2023. So they are weighing in two options. Uh, the first option is about using a net to catch these, uh, the, this right. debris. And the second is the use of robotic arm. The idea, the idea is that both these approaches will deorbit uh, the junk, which will meet its fiery end as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Thank you, Dan. We're going to keep on talking about space and turn our attention this time to the French nanosatellite PICSAT that was recently sent into orbit aboard an Indian rocket. The satellite itself was created by a team of French scientists in a record time of just under three years. And as Shana Bhattacharya explains, its primary aim is to gather information about the massive bright star Beta Pictoris. This is Beta Pictoris, a star close to our solar system that's caught the eye of astronomers. It's a new addition to our universe at just 23 million years old. The disk of dust and asteroids that still surround the star mean we can witness planets being born. 
On voit surtout une planète qui émerge, c'est Beta Pictoris. We can see one planet in particular, Beta Pictoris B. It's several times the size of Jupiter, so it's a big planet. The idea is that by understanding it better, we can learn what the Earth was like five billion years ago, and from there understand how the planets were formed and what happened in the solar system at that time. Ce qui s'est passé dans le système solaire à cette époque. To observe the phenomenon, an Indian rocket put a groundbreaking satellite into orbit. Developed by just five researchers here at this observatory in Meudon, outside of Paris, Pixat, the satellite, is the size of a water bottle. This little black box weighs just three and a half kilos. This satellite has all of the components of a large one. It has the same features like communication technology, a built-in computer, solar panels to provide energy and satellite orientation. It doesn't have a super telescope, just a sensor that records light from stars. And to register the data here on Earth, all that's needed is a simple antenna. The satellite will fly over Paris in about 10 minutes, and with the antenna, we'll follow it, and as it passes by, we'll communicate with it, send it commands, and it'll send us data. The data collected is accessible to everyone. Studying Beta Pictoris will allow scientists to understand how our solar system was born. Now, Dan, tell us more about the telescope. Has it started to observe the star? Not yet, because the satellite uh, is undergoing, uh, or it has uh, some instability. It is spinning around itself. So the engineers at the Moudon Observatory, every day they are sending commands uh, to the satellite using the uh, re radio communication network to ensure that the satellite is stabilized. And they are doing this by firing onboard electric motors and magnotorquers. So uh, by magnotorquers essentially is a copper coil and by uh, running an electric current through the copper coil, a magnetic field is generated, and this magnetic field gets counteracted by the Earth's magnetosphere, and that's how they are planning to stabilize the satellite. And once the satellite is stabilized, it will be focused exclusively on Beta Pictoris. And scientists, more than the star, they are trying to uh, catch the transit of the planet Beta Pictoris B, which happens after every 18 years. That's why they had to build this program very quickly. So fast, right? Yeah, because there's a very short window, and this transition, uh, this transit rather, it lasts for a few hours. So the, this mission is going to last for one year and they have only a few hours to catch this transit. Right. So it's going to be quite a challenge, but if they do manage to catch this transit, then it will help us understand how our planet was formed because as, uh, as we saw in the report, this star is quite young, it's only 20 million years old and the planet, uh, I mean, there's a debris disk around this star and the planet is also quite young. So by understanding the mass, the density, and other features of the planet, which will be calculated by the dip in luminosity uh, from the star, because the planet is going to uh, cross the star, right. and we are here, the planet is here, and the star is here. So the moment there's a dip in luminosity, the, the telescope will be able to register that dip, and then there will be calculations made to determine the features of this planet. And now another aspect of this project, and, and the reason why it's so unique, is that it's also based on the participation of radio amateurs from all over the world. That's right. It, I mean, right now, the satellite, or forever, the satellite will fly four times a day over Paris, and each time it flies for 10 minutes. So overall, only 40 minutes out of 24 hours, satellite, there is a communication from uh, the ground station in Paris with the satellite. But in order to get more and more data, it's naturally you know, obvious that uh, you need more exposure, you need uh, more people around the world to communicate with the satellite. And that's being done with the help of radio amateurs from all over the world. All they need to do is just put up a radio antenna, get the data, and send it and to send it. the station in Paris. And with that, uh, I mean, naturally, the more in information, the better. And so that's how they will be able to uh, not only monitor the star in a better way, but also be able to detect if there are any problems with... Uh... So it's a collaborative project. Absolutely. Thank you, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test24. <music> the obsolescence of gadgets recently resurfaced in the news after a French consumer watchdog filed a complaint against Apple and Epson for allegedly designing products with an artificially limited useful life. But some in the tech community are now fighting this trend. We're going to take a look at a speaker of a bygone era 
It's robust and its batteries last for at least 10 hours. That's right. It's made by the French startup Catapost. And as you can see, it, it's look, it looks quite basic. And the idea behind this is that it is robust. Uh, it follows the open hardware philosophy, which means it is easily repairable. Uh, the parts can be easily replaced and it can be easily maintained. Uh, like with other speakers, so you can connect this particular speaker to your phone through Bluetooth and you can play music. So the speakers are quite powerful. The quality of the sound is good. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite good. And secondly, as I mentioned before, you can easily replace the parts. So I have unscrewed uh, the back of this box. And as you can see, here are the batteries. You can easily change the batteries. You can also change the speakers themselves if you find uh, if there's a problem with them. You can also change the sound card. So this is a DIY speaker, so you can all you so need. you won't have a new version every, every other month. Exactly, it will never become obsolete. So you can, with the basic tools in your house, you can easily repair it. And secondly, we also have uh, a printer. It's right now a concept. Uh, it's just a mock-up. So it's the part, parts these of are, a printer. These are the parts this. of a printer. <laughs> so it's called Impro, and it also follows the same philosophy that it should be you know, easily maintained, it, uh, it should be easily assembled and disassembled at the same time. Now, this is a vertical printer, which is supposed to be used for office spaces, so mostly for designs and plans. So um, that's, that's the philosophy, and this uh, particular printer, the mock-up of this printer is being uh, displaced at a museum in Paris. Thank you, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it, and do stay with us here on France 24.